This is the Adrian Arst Center front of house training for welcoming and working with service animals. Let's begin. Service animals, emotional support animals, and therapy animals. By the end of today's session, you will know what these terms mean and how to distinguish between these types of animals. We should begin by briefly discussing the Americans with Disabilities Act, also known as the ADA. The ADA is a civil rights law that prohibits discrimination against individuals with disabilities in all areas of public life, including jobs, schools, transportation, and all public and private places that are open to the general public. The purpose of the law is to make sure that people with disabilities have the same rights and opportunities as everyone else. So, what exactly is a service animal? The ADA defines a service animal as a dog that has been individually trained to do work or perform tasks for an individual with a disability. The tasks performed by the dog must be directly related to the person's disability. Here's a dog that has been trained to push the accessible open door button. The dog pictured here has been trained to apply deep pressure to a child with autism. And here we have a dog that has been trained to assist with opening doors for this person who uses a wheelchair. It is important to remember that just as some disabilities are not visible, so too may be the tasks a service dog has been trained to perform. For example, a person with diabetes may have a dog that is trained to alert them when their blood sugar is too low. You may be inclined to ask, must a service animal be a dog? Yes, but there is an exception. Miniature horses. While, by definition, a service animal is a dog, entities covered by the ADA must modify their policies to permit miniature horses where reasonable. Some service animal users prefer horses due to their size, working lifespan, or for cultural reasons. Some people with disabilities may use more than one service animal to perform different tasks. For example, someone who has a visual disability and a seizure disorder may use one service animal to assist with wayfinding and another that is trained as a seizure alert dog. Or a person may need multiple service animals to assist with a single task, such as a person who needs two dogs to assist them with stability when walking. Service animals must be under the control of their handler. They must be harnessed. Leashed or tethered, unless the harness or leash interferes with the service animal's work or the handler's disability prevents their use. For example, there are dogs trained to enter and survey an area for safety prior to the handler entering the space. Please keep in mind that under control also means that a service animal should not be allowed to bark repeatedly in a lecture hall, theater, Library or other quiet place. However, if a dog quietly barks just once, or barks because someone has provoked it, this would not mean that the dog is out of control. Please do not distract service animals. The dog's job is to keep its handler safe. When the dog is distracted, it is not paying attention, and its handler could get hurt. Types of distractions include petting. Talking to the animal, saying its name, making eye contact, or any attempt to get the animal's attention. Where are service animals allowed? Service animals may accompany people with disabilities in all areas of a facility where the public is normally allowed to go, including government buildings, businesses, and nonprofit organizations. If it's not readily apparent that an animal is a service animal, may you ask the guest about it? Yes. However, there are only two questions that may be asked. 
One, is the dog a service animal required because of a disability? Two, what work or task has the dog been trained to perform? It is important to remember that staff and volunteers may not require that the dog demonstrate its task or inquire about the nature of the person's disability. Further, they may not request any documentation for the dog, including training records. The ADA does not require that service animals have identification or certification. Certification is not required in part because people may train their own dog based upon their individual disability, and because there is no required certification. The ADA does not require service animals to wear an identifying vest, ID tag, or specific harness. Service animal vests are easily purchased online with no qualifications required. Therefore, wearing one of these items may not accurately identify a dog as a service animal. Service animals are not exempt from local animal control or public health requirements, and are subject to the same licensing and vaccination rules that are applied to all dogs. Additionally, in the state of Florida, service dogs in training have the same rights and responsibilities as service dogs. Let's discuss emotional support animals. This term is used to describe animals that provide comfort solely by being with a person. They provide a therapeutic benefit to the owner through companionship. They may ease anxiety, depression, as well as certain phobias, and they are not trained to perform specific tasks. Unlike service animals, emotional support animals may provide support to more than one person at a time, such as the group of children pictured here. Emotional support animals are not covered by the ADA. What about therapy animals? Therapy animals are typically seen visiting hospitals, nursing homes, daycare centers, and hospices with their handlers. Because they are not trained to perform specific tasks for one person, they are not covered by the ADA. Therapy animals are typically invited by organizations rather than having granted rights. Now, let's discuss our policies and procedures for welcoming service animals at the Adrian Arst Center. Service animals are always welcome. Emotional support animals are not covered by the ADA. If you encounter a guest who has brought an emotional support animal to the theater, please refer them to the house manager for discussion and review. Pets are best left at home. Unfortunately, the theater is no place for pets. Service animals do not require a ticket, and there is never a fee for their access. Keep the aisles clear. The safety policies that apply to service animals are the same as those for our guests. Service animals must not block any aisles or point of egress. Be sure to avoid excessive questioning. You may be confident that if you see a service animal in the auditorium or on the tiers, they have already been greeted. However. If it is not readily apparent that an animal is a service animal, please reach out to your house manager before asking the two authorized questions. We don't want our guests with service animals to have to answer any questions more than once. Complaints about service animals. There may be times when a guest has an objection to the presence of a service animal. A guest may have an allergy to pet dander. Perhaps they are concerned about an aggressive breed, such as pit bulls. There may even be complaints that a guest with a service animal does not have a disability. In each of these cases, we need to remember that a guest with a service animal has the right to be there. So we would need to relocate the guest with the complaint. If a guest questions the veracity of someone's disability, we need to remind them that some disabilities cannot be seen. 
such as anxiety or a seizure condition. Service animals are subject to the same rules and policies as our human guests regarding disruptive and aggressive behavior. If a guest checks their phone once or gently unwraps a single piece of candy, this would not be considered a disruption. By the same token, if a service animal were to yelp one time because their tail has been stepped on, this too would not be considered a disruption. If a guest becomes disruptive, they may be asked to leave if they cannot adjust their behavior. The same policy applies to service animals. If a service animal becomes disruptive, it may be asked to leave. The dog would not be banned permanently, but asked to leave in this instance. The handler would be allowed to return without the animal. Types of inappropriate behavior include barking, not being responsive to the handler's directions, and being allowed to roam freely. If a service animal is out of control and the handler does not take effective action to control it, staff may request that the animal be removed from the premises. Let's take a pause. And review what we've learned. True or false, the definition of a service animal is any animal that has been individually trained to do work or perform tasks for an individual with a disability. False, a service animal is, by definition, a dog. The exception to the definition is a miniature horse that has been appropriately trained. True or false. If it is not readily apparent that an animal is a service animal, may you ask the guest about it? True. You may ask the following two questions: one, is the dog a service animal required because of a disability? Two, what work or task has the dog been trained to perform? True or false? The ADA requires that service animals have certification and that they wear a vest, ID tag, or specific harness indicating their training. False. The ADA does not require that service animals have certification or wear a vest, ID tag, or specific harness. For more detailed information, please visit the Department of Justice Frequently Asked Questions page. Special thanks to Laura Lee Putzback of the Service Dog Alliance of Florida and Lilybeth Bazell of the Arch Center IT Department for their assistance in the creation of this presentation. Additional thanks go to Lynn Walsh of the Shed Aquarium, Carol Kruger of the Denver Center for the Performing Arts, and Adam Ringler of the San Diego Zoo for their work that inspired this presentation. This presentation was created by Matthew Ashley, Jeffrey Gardner, Michael McCabe, Rodolfo Mendebel, and Nicole R. Smith. For more information on accessibility services at the Adrian Arst Center, please email us at accessibility@arstcenter.org. At